We have the opportunity to pose questions to Muslims about what do we actually believe and why. Nor do they have an opportunity to give comments on what they've been told that we believe or give criticisms from their perspective on why we should believe in their way. We like to use this as an opportunity to let the non-Muslims also voice their opinions and their concerns on these topics or any other topic, any other topic within Islam or outside of Islam, anything which they feel that they need to share with us. Do not feel shy to say or state or ask any question, even if you think that it will be offensive to us and make us angry. No one here will be angry with you tonight. We want the non-Muslims to feel free to ask anything, to state anything and to say anything, and we would like you to encourage them to do so. Do not discourage them from doing so, encourage them to do so. So if someone is sitting next to you and he made a comment during the talk, or you think that something might have, ask him. If he has a question, ask him to go to the microphone, inshallah, and assist him in getting to the microphone so that any misconceptions can be clarified. Beginning with the gentleman in the front, please state your name and occupation and then state your question. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Gundu Muhammad Amin. I'm a businessman. Our Christian friends are saying that Jesus Christ did not die. He was crucifixion. He is immortal and he will come again. And that's why they are calling him as a God. Okay, this is a very, very good question. According to the Quranic texts, which we as Muslims believe to be the very speech of God, Allah Almighty has told us that Jesus was not crucified, nor was he killed. They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Do we believe that he was raised up? Yes, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him before the enemies were allowed to take him. And we also believe that he will return. But as Muslims, we don't believe he's going to come to teach Christianity. He's not going to come to invite them to worship him. It wouldn't make sense. It would be vain to think that Jesus is going to come back and tell the people to worship me, your God, when he in fact himself worship his God and our God. But we do believe that when he does come back, that he will come back and establish the laws of God called the Sharia. Ah, and there are very clear signs given to us in the authentic sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Brother, could you please state your name, state your occupation, and then briefly state your question. My name is Sayyid Muhammad. I'm a student of engineering. Uh, basically, the Christians say that Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for all of mankind's sin. Now, does his sacrifice, you know, uh, forgive the sins of present mankind? And does that have anything to do with the resurrection? Are you sure you're an engineer? You asked us some very heavy theological questions. <laughs> I try to read a lot. <laughs> okay. Jesus did not die on the cross, according to our understanding as Muslims, nor did he offer himself as a sacrifice. However, we know that this is part of the Christian theology, that he died for the sins of the world. But there are some flaws, some fatal flaws in that doctrine. Number one, if that is so, what about all the people who committed sin before Jesus came? Does that mean that they're not saved? If in fact his death on the cross was for the sins of the world. Does that mean that those who came before him who never knew him, that they would not be saved? Number two, it absolves each and every human being of his or her responsibility for their actions. And we know that Allah the Almighty is just. He is Al-Adl. He is the just one. And he will not punish one person for the sins of another. Unless, of course, we don't do the work of da'wah. In that case, those of us who neglect to give da'wah, 
When Allah sends punishment, he will punish all of us together with the non-Muslim, with the disbelievers. So we better get busy. But in this case, as I mentioned in the hypothetical situation I was given, it would not be fair for Jesus to be killed for the sins of others. When in fact, Allah tells us in the Quran that everyone is responsible for their own deeds. That no bearer of burdens can bear the burdens of another. As it relates to the resurrection, what they call the resurrection was the part of the story that he rose from the dead after being in the tomb for three days. Now there's some question about their mathematics. We know that maybe they're like some prison guards. You know, in prison, the most important thing that they're concerned about is safety, security, and count. And some prison guards can't count worth a lick. It's like they keep counting the inmates over and over and over again and come up with a different number. It's the same in this case. Some say it was three days, but if you study the text of the, of the Gospels, it wasn't three days. You see? They also say three is one and one is three. So we won't count on their mathematical skills. But for them, the resurrection has to do with Jesus being raised from the dead. Because we don't believe that he was killed, we don't acknowledge the story of resurrection. We acknowledge that he was raised up, that he was taken up by Almighty God Allah, and that he is alive now in a place that Allah knows best and how it was done. We don't question that. We accept it coming from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that he will return and establish the Islamic law in the land. And we pray that Allah make us ready for that. Now, your second question. Basically, uh, recently there was a controversy based on the book, uh, The Real Da Vinci Code. I know it's a bit out of the topic, but basically in that they say he had a wife, Mary Magdalene. And it was important for the Christian church to deny that because apparently it was against the foundation of Christianity. Now I want to know, uh, in the Quran's respect, would, I mean, is it a possibility that Isa salam, had a family? I have not read the book, The Da Vinci Code. I haven't seen the movie. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think I'll read it or see it. I, but I do know that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did say that when he comes back, that he will marry and he will have children. Whether he had it then or not is immaterial. It doesn't say so in Quran. But in the authentic hadith, we are told that he will return, he will marry and have children. We'll begin with the men's mic in the rear. I see a hand up, meaning we have a non-Muslim questioner, inshallah. Brother, could you please state your name, your occupation, and then your question for us, please. My name is Peter Chandran. I'm working as professor in an engineering college. Welcome, Peter. Just now, I arrived in this meeting, and I heard you teaching about Jesus Christ. We as Christians, we believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. We respect uh, Muslims, we love Muslims, as we respect all other people. The foundation of Christianity is Jesus is the Son of God. It was uh, declared by one of his disciples. Jesus told him that this is the re revelation from the Father and he said uh, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the hell shall not prevail against it. Now, this is what our foundation, that Jesus is the Son of God and you are attacking our foundation and we believe Jesus is the Son of God. How can you say that he is not the Son of God? This is my question. Thank you very much for your question. And before I answer the question, I want to make it very, very clear. I'm not an alim or a scholar. I'm a, a student of learning, inshallah ta'ala, and a slave of Allah. And perhaps in most of your questions, 